So hello everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back to another episode of the Hermitcraft. So I am uh, super excited to check out this nether tree farm, been working on it the last few hours, and we're ready to take our first test. Give it a try, let's see what happens here. I think we're gonna call it the Beaver Blaster. Now, before we check out the Beaver Blaster, let's just take a look at the basic mechanics behind it. So as many of you know, if you bone meal Nylium, you can use a dispenser to do it even, uh, you have a chance of getting the little fungi to grow, uh, which grow into the nether trees. It's kind of rare though. Oh, look, we just got one over here. So if one of those grows on the Nylium and you bone meal that, it'll grow a tree automatically but you have to get lucky and get it. And a lot of times you don't. So if you don't get it, what you gotta do is get rid of the plant above here. So we use a piston to push up and that breaks the plant. And then we try again. And every so often, you know, we just reset and whoa, <laughs> we got a tree. Now, eventually, if that trunk is on top of the Nylium here, this is gonna revert back to Netherrack. So what we also gotta do is make sure we can grow Nylium back to this block so that we also have bone meal in this dispenser. And then what we did is we just took that basic idea, added as little redstone as possible to fully automate this thing and uh, scaled it up. So I came up with a fully tileable design here so we could have one tree farm, we could have two, we could have 36 like we have here <laughs> all combined together or we could go even greater. We could over have over 100 if we wanted. Just every two blocks, we have a repeating pattern. This is what controls it at the end here. So we use a sticky piston to push an observer in front of this one. That creates an observer clock. And then uh, we also have an observer going down to the pistons below here. The first one's set at four. All the other ones are set at one. And then between each of the dispensers, we have an observer going this way. And then these chests up above are for extra bone meal that goes down to the dispensers. So I think we're ready to start growing things. Let's... Flip the lever here and see what happens. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Oh, we got some giant trees there. Interesting. Oh, wait a second. I just thought of something. We might have a problem. This isn't really tested, by the way. <laughs> uh, we're kind of testing it as we go. Okay, so check this out. Some of the pistons are going up and down still. Some of the trees have grown and there's over 12 logs above. The pistons can't push those anymore, so they stop moving. And also, they stop using bone meal, I believe. Yeah, this isn't running anymore. Okay, so the problem I just realized we're gonna have is these trees grow very tall, and they grow through blocks. Like, look at our redstone right now. Some of the trees are starting to grow in our wiring. Um, that's fine. They're not gonna destroy any of the redstone. But what they will do is clog our... Uh, dispenser things here. So this is where the TNT is supposed to go. I don't have it loaded just yet. We also have water here, which I have to cover over because we're in a cold biome. It freezes. But the nether wart will destroy water. You can see it happened already. And if that happens, our machine's going to blow up if we lose the water. Um, so what we got to do is put a water log sign in there, I think. Then the nether wart can't destroy the water block. And also we got to fill these two air spaces here. They can't be air spaces. But what we're doing here is we're dispensing the TNT in water and then we use the travel time of the water to control when it blows up and also the height of the dispenser. Awesome. All right, check it out. So all the trees have fully grown. Our growing mechanic seems to work okay. And some of the plants shot up through the hoppers. That's intentional. So we're going to collect some of the, the drops. Some of them get lost down there and some of them are going to go in our uh, composting system here. This is optional. Just added it because it does collect a, a few of the drops and you can see we've already gotten some bone meal from that but yeah most of the plant matter and the wood and our shroom lights and stuff are going to end up in these barrels and we're going to have to send the plant matter to composters and then separate the wood and the shroom lights from it uh, all the hoppers kind of merge together in the middle here from both sides what we're also going to do now is add some water above the barrels so that when the tnt falls down it doesn't blow them up and it doesn't blow up our hoppers so yeah, we're just going to run along the middle here now and get a bunch of water. Going to add some crying obsidian on the ends here. We don't really need to build out a crying obsidian, I don't think. I just did it to be safe. So just for now, we're going to manually trigger the TNT. Eventually, we'll hook it up to a hopper clock, though, and it'll run fully automatically. But I'm a little too scared to do that. So let's give it a go. Okay, so the TNT is going to fall down. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> 
Whoa! Oh my goodness, that is amazing. That was actually really cool. <laughs> All right, yeah, that went uh, that went good, right? Oh, creeper! <laughs> All right, now assuming nothing blew up down below, <laughs> we should be able to grow the trees again here. Just leave the lever flipped, and then every so often, just hit the button or have a hopper clock trigger it for us, and uh, yeah, every time twenty one TNT falls down. Let's go again here. Yeah, it's looking okay. It's looking okay. Some of those are probably out of bone meal, though. Okay, we get more. <laughs> All right, none of the hoppers are blowing up. I think we're good. I think it worked. It works. It actually works. <laughs> that beaver blaster is amazing. I love it. But uh, yeah, we spent way longer on this than I was planning this episode, so I'll finish it up uh, hopefully between episodes and uh, we'll check it out again later. Just uh, quickly here, the way we're going to do the collection system is have uh, Hopper minecarts run underneath the barrels and they can pull items out of them super quickly. <laughs> Now, here's the thing, that actually isn't our main project for today. No, 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 no. <laughs> I got a massive project planned, and we needed warp stems and crimson stems for it. I did not want to farm them up manually, so that just is part one of what we're doing here. Another thing we're going to need a ton of for this project is smooth sandstone. So let's fire up our super smelter. Yeah, yeah, okay. He's uh, helping us out. We gotta buy some prismarine and, and sea lanterns here, too. Oh, man, I wish I made a guardian farm this season. Impulse has made a fortune off of me. You have no idea. Cool, cool. Well, we just about got all the materials we need for our project. I just went and grabbed some soul soil as well from the nether and uh, I talked to Hypno. He said it would be okay if I used his drowned zombie farm here to collect some tridents. We need at least 10 tridents, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it only works when I'm the only one online. It's That's like the thing on the server. I can never find a, a moment. We'll come back to this later. For now, I think we just gotta get started on building because we got a lot of building we need to do. Uh, check this out. This is my hole over here. <laughs> it's a pretty impressive hole, I gotta say. Uh, it's not quite as impressive as some of the other holes around here, but uh, it's my hole and I'm happy with it. Uh-huh, so let's get down to it here. What are we actually going to be building today? Well, uh, <laughs> we're going to take a little break from Hurtin' Hermits to start a brand new mini game because uh, the other day... We had a run-in with the HEP members again. Uh, somehow, B00 moved our Ender Pearls in the emergency meeting thing, and he teleported us into a prison. Hello there, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Beat up sent me a message, and I had no idea what was going on. I don't even have my moccasins on for the day. And then I come in here, and I find you all in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this. There's this switch, and it pours oh, lava oh, on oh, you guys. Oh, no, 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 Never mind. <laughs> Get to his monster. <laughs> oh, it's going down Smart. again. Oh, oh, no, 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 the llama? Yes. Okay, we'll meet yeah. up in the llama. All right. Okay. Uh, hold on, I'll just right. kill you guys out of there. Hold on, I'm just gonna... Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, hey, stand here so they can't curl out. Oh, <laughs> Etho! Of course! <laughs> of course, Etho. <laughs> Dang it. Woo! I can't get out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm still in shock. Oh, Iso, oh stop no! it! <laughs> oh my god. Yay! Oh! I'm out! Oh. oh my god. It's not. It's Etho. Yes! Oh.
I was well, I was thinking we settle this like real human beings mm -hmm. through sports. Mm. What if we yeah. like made some mini games? Like each team made mini games. I've been thinking about this. It's been brewing for a while. You see, we each make mini games, and then we have a few rules surrounding it that we can work out later. But the the winner of the most mini games, who gets the most points, wins the war. Bingo, bango, and we'll probably like I don't know what are the consequences here. Consequences: the loser has to restore the island. This is what's posted about the event, by the way. You can pause and read it if you want. But the thing that really caught my attention is the games will begin on the 11th of December, which is like tomorrow. So we really got to get this done today. Uh, there's no slacking on this one. Um, yeah, and then there's going to be consequences for the losing team. I saw B-Dubs snuck this in. Etho has to make a super unique fast smelter for B-Dubs if, uh, if we lose. <laughs> Oh, I got a good idea, I think. How about I leave it up to you guys to decide what happens to B-O-O? <laughs> uh, what, what consequence should B-Dubs face if his team loses the minigame event? Let me know in the comments. I'll try to pick the best one, the, the evilest of one. <laughs> and he'll have to face it. Uh, also, I made a deal with Tango for, for what happens if either of us loses. The loser has to use the exploding rockets for a month. Instead of your regular rockets. <laughs> Do I save it for flight? For flight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go outside for a sec. Are you kidding me? Well, actually, we, we can just fly around in here, probably. So after the firework goes, it explodes bah! at the end. <laughs> just, like, just like a really bad car, just backfire. Oh, man, I don't have any armor. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but the great thing about it is you can color code it you know you know you can personalize it a little signature trail yeah, yeah. you like right, red you, right. you can have glitter yeah. at the end of it you know you can yeah, do whatever you, you want but get a little uh, flair bling it out i like that i like that you gotta yeah. use them for a month how's that sound i'm, I'm gonna be like blast eat blast eat yeah, yeah. blast eat yeah oh my gosh that sounds hilarious i'm on board i'm on board and this is this is for the whole contest, right? Not an individual thing or anything, right? Not yeah, yeah. Which it. whichever team wins. So. Okay. So if <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this, there's no way that we're gonna win. If the resistance, if resistance wins, wins, Tango must. Oh yeah, use I, I do it here. Only. Uh, yeah, you do it on the other side. Must use only exploding rockets to fly. Oh, does blast resistance armor work? I bet you it does. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I want to stock up on blast resistance. Really I don't think you take much damage, though. It's more of like the... Yeah. It's, it's more of the embarrassment. Well, I, yeah. I took a heart from that. Yeah. And I, I got nothing but my Christmas outfit on here, so it, it hurts. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're not wearing armor, you're going to be... Really... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, that is such... I love it. I love it. I don't care who wins. I just... This is going to be hilarious. <laughs> now we are back in the magnificent hole here. <laughs> We're starting to do some building. And uh, you can see we got a layer of soul soil down already. Uh -huh -huh. We're trying to build a very action-packed mini game here. Uh, and uh, I want soul soil down so we can zip around. We might use the speed two beacon as well. And we'll just be all over the place here. So the actual plan, what are we doing? We're going to be building a mini game called the Rip Zone. It's a PvP arena. <laughs> so we got to build it in a day. Otherwise, the server is going to reset on us. But rather than using swords and bows like most PvP, the plan is to use the trident. So check this out. If we put down slabs, you still get the soul speed effect. Uh, and then you can waterlog those slabs and you still get it as long as you have depth strider. Now, the cool thing is tridents, like if you, if you hold right click in the air, nothing happens. But if you have the riptide effect and you're standing in water, this counts as standing in water. You can actually throw it like that. And uh, if you hit a player, it's going to damage them. <laughs> you see where we're going with this? So we're going to make an arena flooded with water, kind of like this. And uh, then uh, people will battle it out with tridents and try to kill each other. Yeah, so that's the basic idea behind it. But we're also going to be adding in a lot of other mechanics to try spice things up. Check it out. We got the arena all flooded now and we can zip back and forth with our riptide. No problem. And when you land in the water, you don't take fall damage either. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. So I'm hoping this is going to be a three versus three game, maybe up to five versus five. It's supposed to be a team game. So we need quite a bit of space. And I think this is uh, this is good. We're also going to build it pretty tall because as you saw, we fly 
really high up. Uh Uh-huh. So we're going to have two teams. One of the teams is represented by the warped stems and the other team by the crimson stems. And this is our dividing line down the center. But this is also serving as the timer visualizer for the game. Uh, Very simple, just a comparator running along the lamps here. And depending on how many items are in the chest, uh, once all the items flow out of here, that's going to represent that the time ran out in the game and the game's going to stop. So as that counts down, the lights get closer and closer to the middle. They, they disappear from that side and this side and, and merge to the middle. So I think that's a kind of a cool effect. So if we take some of these out, you can see only five lights are on now. And uh, yeah, once it gets all the way off, game over. Okay, so let's talk game design here for a second, because it might be a bit of an odd decision to go for a timer in a PvP game. Like, why don't we just make it first team to 10 kills wins? I thought it might be better because we're planning on doing a YouTube video on this, right? It's nice to know how long the game's going to be, because then you can plan a certain portion of the video dedicated to it. But if you go for 10 kills, you never know how long that's going to take. So the plan is to have a scoring system. You get uh, points for handing in other players' heads, but there's also going to be another mechanic involving... uh, these guys, these will also be worth points. <laughs> but before we can really explain that, I think we just got to do a building montage here and build up the arena so that uh, some of this will make more sense. So let's get to building. snappers welcome to the rip zone everybody we just about got her all done here and uh it's taken uh not gonna lie it's two days now I i guess that deadline for december 11th wasn't as strict as i thought it was so we got a bit more time here if we needed it but uh just got a couple things left to work out on it just a few little details the bulk of this thing is complete now and boy i tell you It's been a lot of fun, actually. I'm loving this project. So (laughs) I never really use Riptide too much, like just in general. I usually will go for channeling and loyalty and that that sort of thing with it. But it's a lot of fun. Just zipping around places, you know? I love it. It's so cool. But uh, yeah, let's start talking about some of the details and how the game works here. So for one thing, you can see a lot of our walls are made out of water. I just wanted it to be nice and easy to get around here. Pretty much the whole floor and all the walls are water. I decided I was going to maybe try put water in the roof as well, but decided against it. We would have to hold the the water up with chains or something, and it wouldn't really work too well. Um, We got, like, platforms all over the place here that are also waterlogged, so it's pretty easy to go wherever you want on the the map here. I'm probably going to add a couple, like, obstacles on the ground level here as well, so you can't just, like, zip right through. You'll have to maneuver around them. Uh, check this out. We got honey walls. These are actually a pretty important feature. So there's a cool trick you can do with honey. Uh, if you have a bubble vader on the other side, like in the corner, then uh, you can actually touch the water because honey doesn't take a full block and you can get teleported up like that. 
And that works really good hand in hand with our trident here because we can just zip into the wall like this. Go up and then like, bam, get someone in the middle. Or we can just hover in the middle part of it here and, you know, just wait, aim our shot and bam, get somebody. Okay, so this is definitely a pretty weird game. I'm going to try my best to explain it to you guys. So these two things on the end, that's the spawning rooms for each of the teams. We still haven't built those. Is this going to be like a bed, a uh, place to get your armor, your trident, and probably like a ready switch to start the game? But that's where the teams are going to start out. Um, the goal is to sort of fight over these contention zones. There's three of them. And uh, we have these weird gizmos above the, each contention zone where... Let's just flip the lever here. They basically spawn in cod. <laughs> and they fall in the water below like that. Uh, each of those cods is worth about a point, right? Uh, so the, the idea is... You can see the bucket of cods are getting dispensed here. And then the piston pushes down to break the water. And then they fall straight down into the water below. And any empty buckets get collected together here from an item filter. Like so. And we got three of these things set up. There's probably enough, I think. Uh, there's also a randomizer attached to each of these that can control how often they get spawned in. We'll turn another one on here. All three of these will be running during the game, though. So people will will spawn in, and they're going to be fighting over the cod. Actually, a lot of them here. We might need to slow it down. And you, you're going to be riptiding into them. I think I'm going to make a rule that you're not allowed to left-click. Because you can also kill them that way. I think that would be kind of not as cool. Okay, people are going to be fighting over the cod, because they're each worth a point. You collect them, and then there's these three gates on each side. Each side has them. You're supposed to go up to these and throw in a cod. That activates the gate. we we'll go over this one. Um, there's going to be four people on the team, though, I think, so they're, you know, there's going to be a lot of tasks to do, but when you break it up between all the players, it's not going to be as big of a deal. But then once you activate all three gates, it opens up the big gate down here. For a brief amount of time and this is where you actually throw in your fish for points and your player heads in that and they get added to your total of points and then after a certain amount of time it closes again those all get reset up there and you're supposed to uh, decide when you want to actually trigger the gate because you have to sacrifice three points just to open up the main one there and as you're doing that, as you're putting your, your cod in, you're vulnerable, your back's turned on the enemy, and they might try to kill you and steal your fish and your, your player heads. And uh, if you hold on to your points for too long, you know, you're a big bounty when you get killed, and the other team's allowed to steal your points, so... <laughs> yeah, it should be pretty interesting, I think. Yeah, we definitely have way too many spawning, though, I think. I gotta slow that down. And yeah, it's a bit of a goofy game. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, some players are going to just be focusing on hunting fish, because each one's worth a point, right? But then other players might, uh, you know, they'll see the guy hunting the fish down there, and they're like, oh, that's kind of an easy target, and bam, they'll get you instead. And if they kill you, you're going to drop all your fish, they'll steal them, and then they'll get the points for them. And that's, of course, assuming the player that steals the points is able to enter them into their main gate here. Anything in people's inventories doesn't count towards their points, it's only when they submit them here. And player heads are probably going to be worth 5 points, but not from your own team, just opposing team player heads. But you'll still want to put all player heads in here so that the other team doesn't steal your teams from you, you know, when you die. So just throw all player heads in here and all COD and you're doing good, is the general idea. Then once all the time runs out, the team with the most points wins. Anyway, uh, that's our general game idea here, so if you have suggestions, let me know. Was my explanation clear? I sure hope so, because I gotta explain it to the hermits before they play as well and it's like uh, how do i say this how do i explain this in as few words and like as detailed as possible because there's a lot of little details to consider with this i might just need to write it down and, and read it or something i don't know uh but yeah i'm gonna work out the rest of this game off camera probably there's not much left to go here and uh, before we end this episode though i did do one other side project another note block thing for tango we're here for amazingness i i hear no pun intended, right? Like, uh, it, you're done. It's all finished. It's, it's complete. It's right. It's retro. It's, uh, it's amazing. 
Okay. I mean, so do we, do we just start the game or do you want to show it to me or how do you want to? Uh, up to you. Well, well, let's go check it out. Is it is it like okay. below the floor here or something? Here. I think I put it down here somewhere. I kind of covered it all. So. <laughs> you, you lost it. I know. I got yeah, it hooked like up to your game. Day. So you just like hit start and it'll start. But uh, oh. here it is. Coast is clear. No creepers. Oh, my. Okay. Oh so it's like, a, it, does it loop or I assume? It does. It loops and it's got some controls to like replay sections. Oh, to, my gosh. To make it more compact. I think uh, over here. Okay. All right, I can't wait. I can't wait. The the maze. Okay, I'm gonna hit it. Go for it. I think it's this one. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, that's loud. It's like ah, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So there's a. I was expecting like the one note version. You've got like the super corded up version. Yeah, 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 four notes playing at a time. There's like three or four at a time always, yeah. And there's a lower section. Look at that. Down over here. Look what what? Oh my gosh! <laughs> You're like we're like the into the chorus and stuff. Yeah, and then it starts over. Oh my gosh! But it plays this part twice, and then it plays this part once. Down See here. that is. That's what makes you so so good at this because not only are you incredible with the music blocks, but you you apply redstone and uh -huh. logic to it as well, uh -huh. so that you can actually like make the songs dynamic. You know, that's just amazing. It's it saved so many note blocks too. Yeah, because you could just kind of like weave in extra layers in real time. Like this is incredible. The, oh my gosh. The other thing I did is I added in these uh, pistons here, so uh -huh. if you stop the game. Uh, it won't have to play through the whole song. It can stop at certain sections of the song. Wow. Yeah, so there's like one stop point over there. Uh, like can... emergency stops. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And there's like one up oh, wow. up here too. So it'll this stop like insane. after 20 seconds or so. This is absolutely insane. So <laughs> like, remember when I, when I first brought you over here, I was like, oh, maybe like some Tetris or something. What did you say? What did you say? So I, I looked at it and like... <laughs> A lot of the notes, a lot of the ones I saw had like huge octave ranges, but I found one that uh -huh. was a little bit more perfect for Minecraft. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because this is non trivial and you just knocked it out of the park. You were like, yeah, Tetris? Oh, that's too hard. Maybe something else. <laughs> and then you did this. And you didn't even do the simple 8 bit version. You did the real deal. Like, unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Stop button. Wow. There we go. Just like that, uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I just have one question for you. Are you, like, a wizard or something on the side? Do you actually, like, the weaver of arcane arts or anything like that? Because how, how do you how do you do this? Um, I cheat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> do you? Is, you know? <laughs> I, I didn't make the... So don't get confused. I didn't actually make the song. I just copied it. No, no, it. no, I know. But to translate I, music... I'm, I'm the copy blocks, ninja. Seem... I'm the copy okay. ninja. <laughs> But you still know how to apply, like, written music into... You convert it into note blocks, is what you're saying, right? I can do that, yeah. That's one thing I did That's learn. crazy. Do you have a... You don't have a musical background, do you? No, it's something I've been learning, like, in the last oh, couple man. years here. What's the damage there, boss? Oh, yeah, I gotta pay me. I forgot. <laughs> Let's go for... Two stacks of diamonds? Da, 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 da. Oh, Bam. yeah. Payday. Payday. Beef will be happy. <laughs> Thank Keeping you very much. Alive. Yep, yep. Alrighty. All right, good stuff. So that's pretty much all I got for you guys this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, check this out. I did move our portal down here, by the way. So it's no longer just up in the sky randomly. <laughs> we had like an extra spot here. And uh, at first I didn't like it too much, but I really do like it now. I think it works okay. I put magenta terracotta next to it. It's a little bit more purple compared to like the pink we were using in the room. And it kind of blends in pretty good that way. And I tried to hide the obsidian as much as possible, too. Uh-huh. Anyways, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.